Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hey, hi, my name is Kimberly and this is my channel. Today is Tuesday, which means it is my true crime series and then the new name is Gruesome and Glamorous because I'm gonna talk about something gruesome, but I'm gonna try to be glamorous about it. Do you guys like that? Do you like it? On other days, I don't do true crime. True crime is just every Tuesday. On other days, I do product reviews, product comparisons, do tips and tricks with your autistic child, very light things, Tamagotchi tutorials, makeup tutorials, fad diets. I do a lot of fun stuff over here. So if any of that sounds fun to you, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and we can hang out. We can hang out more. And my voice doesn't always sound like this. I'm hoping it's, it's going to keep continuing to get better. I had laryngitis, but I didn't want to let you guys down. Okay. So here I am gruesome and glamorous. And if you're not new, welcome back. Hi. I love you guys. Thank you for coming to hang out with me. It means the world to me. And I love hearing your case suggestions and, and just any kind of interaction you guys offer to me. I'm super, super grateful. So hope you guys keep coming back for more because I don't know. I like hanging out with you. Do you like hanging out with me? You I'll do like the box. You can like check yes or no. You can let me know in the comments. Okay. You can let me know in the comments. Anyway, today's case has nothing to do with Valentine's Day. Even though Valentine's Day was yesterday, I felt like I wanted to do this case because this person is like this sex kitten, like just this miraculous lover. She is from Australia and she actually got the harshest sentence that a woman has ever gotten in Australia. Okay. Yes. Her name is Catherine Knight, Catherine Mary Knight. And she was known as the Dark Knight. No, not Batman. No, not Batman. The original. Catherine Mary Knight was the Dark Knight. She was also known as the Australian Hannibal Lecter. So if that tells you anything, and also if you click the thumbnail, you kind of know what's about to go down. You know. So I do want to give my disclaimer about this story before we jump in. There will be murder. There will be there's several uh, issues with domestic abuse. So if that's something that's a trigger for you, you need to escape out of this video and it will not hurt my feelings. I totally understand. But there's going to be graphic description of crime scenes, lots of blood, lots of gore. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> I love doing that. Do you guys like it? <laughs> anyway, this video is for entertainment and education only and everything I'm going to tell you today is the truth as far as I know it I don't want to tell you guys any lies but occasionally I might get my information incorrect from whatever source I've gotten it from I usually get it from lots of sources so it's kind of like all jumbled together what makes more sense to me okay all right so let's start out with Catherine Catherine Mary Knight was a twin and she was born half an hour after her big sister Joy at Tenterfield Hospital in Northwestern, South Wales on October 24th, 1955. Catherine's mother, Barbara, had already had four previous children. And we're going to kind of jump into Barbara just a little bit. I'm just going to give you a tiny bit of a backstory with Barbara. So Barbara already had four boys from a previous relationship. She was married to a guy named Jack Rowan or Rogan. I'm so sorry if I'm saying it wrong. wrong. I'm not even, I'm not sure. Rogan. We're just going to call him Jack Rogan. If I'm saying it wrong, I am so sorry. It might be Rohan, but I don't know. I can't ask him. So we're just going to go with that. Okay. We're going to go with that. Anyway, Barbara was married to Jack Rogan and then they had the four boys. They had Patrick, Martin, Neville, and Barry. So house full of boys. Well, Barbara, I guess, wasn't satisfied with Jack and their four children. And she started to have an affair with one of Jack's co-workers. I mean, come on, if you're gonna cheat with somebody, let's not do it with a co-worker, I mean, come on. 
come on, Barbara, do better. Anyway, she falls in love with Ken Knight, who she had an affair with. I don't know if they're really in love, but anyway, she ends up with him. So Jack took the two older boys and the two younger boys went and lived in Sydney with their aunt. Now Jack eventually dies, Jack Rogan. He dies and the boys have to come back and live with Barbara and Kid Knight. Then Barbara gave birth to two more boys. She had Charlie and Shane. So let me tell you, we got a house full of boys and Catherine and Joy, the twins. Now Ken worked at an abattoir. I'm not sure if you know what that is. And I don't even know if I'm saying abattoir right, but I feel like I'm saying it right. Sounds right, sounds good. Abattoir, abattoir. Well, it's a slaughterhouse, so it's not that exciting. It sounds kind of nice, but it's not. He worked at a slaughterhouse and he worked long hours, back breaking 12 hours a day. And he would travel with his family and basically take work wherever he could, being a butcher and, or working at the slaughterhouse, deboning and all of, all of those things that you do at the slaughterhouse, you know, cutting the pig's heads off and all that mess. Okay. But he would just travel with his family and find work wherever he could. Well, Barbara and Ken eventually settled in Aberdeen and he was able to find steady work. So now Ken has a steady job. Well, Catherine's father, Ken, Ken was no picnic to live with. And I do believe that Barbara regretted this decision to be with him, but it's too late, right? They already have all these kids now and her Jack is gone, okay? Ken was a very violent man. He was angry a lot and he would have sex with Catherine's mother up to 10 times a day. And he would rape her because he felt like if he wanted it, she had to give it to him. And that's just what he believed. And he had a very, very large appetite for sexual pleasures, okay? Now, Barbara would talk to Catherine and probably Joy too. And she would talk to them about very inappropriate things because she, maybe she didn't have any friends, I don't know. But she would tell her girls how much she hated sex, how awful the sex was with their dad. Just very inappropriate things. But this was probably laying some foundation for Catherine to have some kind of sick feeling towards sex. Also, Catherine claims that she was molested by family members I don't know which ones until she was about 11 years old. Now, there were interviews and other family members confirmed that Catherine was also molested. So, I am telling you this because I'm trying to pinpoint different things that may have triggered her to become the monster that she became. I'm not making excuses for her, okay? Just remember that I am not making excuses for this sexy, sex kitten. Okay. okay, she's still young now, so she hadn't started all that. She hasn't, but you'll see, you will see. Now, as Catherine was growing up, people said she was a lovely, a lovely girl. She loved animals, she was kind, but she had very dark moods and murderous rage. So if anybody made her mad, she would lose it. Now at school, she actually injured a teacher, she injured a student, she's just attacked them, I don't know why. But if she wasn't upset, she was thought of as a model student. However, she was a loner, she didn't have a lot of friends, and people called her a bully. So, it, you got, like, the teachers maybe liked her when she wasn't attacking somebody. I don't know. Anyway, she didn't stay in school for too long. When she learned how to read and write, she just dipped out. She's ready to get out. And she actually, at the age of 16, her sister Joy and her, they go to work at the abattoir with their father. They would bone out the carcasses and Catherine got her own set of knives. And this was like her prized possession. She loved these knives. She even took the knives and hung them above her bed because she was thinking, if I ever need these knives, they're right here. Okay, so if I wanna stab somebody or cut something up, they're right here. Don't come for me. I got knives above my bed. I'm sure that's what she was thinking. I mean, I don't know, but it just sounds right to me, okay? Now, around the time that Catherine started working at the abattoir, she met her first love, and his name was David Kellett. 
he was actually a coworker of Catherine's and she just completely dominated him. Also, he was kind of a fighter, so they would go out drinking, and if he got in a fight, Catherine was right there. Catherine was ready to fight. She was always ready to fight. She wanted to fight, and a lot of people would back down from her because, I'm going to say everyone backed down from her because people were afraid. They knew she had a reputation, like, early on. Now, in Aberdeen, everyone pretty much knew if you upset Catherine, she's going to come at you with, uh with her fist or a knife or anything, okay? Well, Catherine decided she wanted to marry David Kellett and she basically said, we're gonna get married and he said, okay. Catherine Knight married David Kellett in 1974 because she wanted to get married. They arrived on motorcycles and David was extremely intoxicated. Now, Catherine's mother, Barbara, gave some advice to David. I'm not telling you exactly what she said verbatim, but she basically said, she will effing kill you. Don't ever make her mad because she will come for you. And you know, you are making a mistake. That's not what she said exactly, but it was along those lines. Basically, she's she might kill you and you probably should not have married her. That's what I was getting from what she said. Now the marriage was particularly violent. It started with Catherine strangling David because he would not have sex with her more than three times because he was so drunk. And she felt like because her mother and father had sex five times on their wedding night, that that's what David should have provided for her. And he did it and he fell asleep so she wanted to kill him. So after this, he felt a little, a little, uh, cautious with his new wife very cautious with his new wife but let me tell you this one was was good in bed and men just put up with her crap i mean really she just goes up to a dude hey let's get married he's like all right let's do this i mean what is she doing i don't know i need to know but i don't they're married and they do end up creating a child and while while Catherine is very pregnant, she gets mad because David comes home late. He's out with his coworkers. So she is livid. Catherine decided to burn all of his clothes and she met him at the front door with a skillet. She hit him over the head so hard with it. He walked over to the neighbors, passed out, and he actually had a, a skull fracture but he didn't go get it checked until the next day because he was afraid of Catherine. And let me tell you, if he would have gone to the police at that time, maybe the events that happened later would have never happened. I don't know, I don't know. But Catherine had the good good, you know what I mean? And guys were just falling all over it. So he, you know, just stuck around. Eventually Catherine did have to give birth to the baby that she was pregnant with and she named the baby Melissa Ann and she was born around May 1976. And shortly after she was born, David Kellett just could not take it anymore. He could not take the mood swings, the physical, the verbal, the constant abuse, her destroying things, her, yeah. So he took off with another woman. Oh yes, he left her with the new baby and took off with another woman. So he left and Catherine is super depressed, just so depressed and she probably has postpartum. Well, she is seen walking down the street with a baby stroller and she's like swinging it very violently. And everybody's wondering what is going on with her. And that's the part I was talking about that she didn't actually injure the baby, but I mean, she may have, but she was for sure scaring this two month old with her violent movements. She ends up taking the two month old baby and she sets it on the train tracks. Now, mind you, the train is, is going to arrive at any moment and she knows that it is time for the train. So she leaves the baby there and she gets a, she gets an ax. She goes into town and she starts swinging it around, threatening to kill everybody. Thank goodness that there was just a man foraging around where the train tracks were and he actually grabbed baby Melissa before she got hit by the train. And you know, Catherine did not care. She didn't care, no. She had to go into the mental institution and they treated her for postpartum depression. 
she was there for several weeks trying to get better. Now, once she got out of the hospital and got her baby back, she just went on another crazy spree. She went up to this woman with a butcher knife, slashed the woman in the face, told the lady, you are going to drive me to find David Kellett. And David Kellett was actually in Queensland, so this is where she was trying to get to. Well, they go to the, the gas station, and the woman, she's bleeding profusely from being slashed by this butcher's knife. She gets away, but as the police are on their way, Catherine takes hold of a little boy, and she holds him hostage. The police get there, and they start beating her up with some brooms that they found around, and then they were able to, to get the boy away from her and able to arrest Catherine again. Now, Catherine said that she really wanted to kill the man that worked at, she wanted to kill that mechanic at the gas station because it was his fault that David left her because the mechanic had did some work on his car and then that is why he left. Sure, Catherine, that's why he left. He left because his car got fixed. Yeah, okay, it has nothing to do with your violent attitude. None. Yeah, right. Now, police notified David Kellett of what had gone on. And let me tell you what he does. He leaves his girlfriend and him and his mom go and get Catherine and take care of her. And I guess maybe David Kellett was thinking about all that good sexual loving. And so he decided, hey, I guess I can make it work with this person in the psychiatric hospital. Or maybe he felt guilty. I don't know. He could have been a good dude for all I know. <laughs> now, now that all that happened, David's come back to her. Things were even worse. Catherine was even more violent. She was always attacking David with her fist. She would take appliances, anything that she could get her hand on. She would take it and throw it at him and beat him with it. And somehow... In 1980, they give birth, or she gives birth, to another child of David's. Like I said, she's got that good, good. It's real, real good, okay? Anyway, they named the baby Natasha Marie. And then it, one day, Catherine, it's around 1984, Catherine is like, you know what? I don't want to be with David anymore. So she takes the girls, she takes her two daughters, and she goes to stay with her parents. And of course, she gets a job working at the abattoir. And she starts saving up money. But Catherine didn't stay with her, her parents for too long. She made some money. She got more stable. And she was able to rent a house pretty much down the road from them. So then she could still get help or whatever. And I don't know. I feel like there was probably some tension in the house. I don't know. That's just what I think. Probably wrong. About a year later, Catherine injures her back while she's working at the abattoir, and then she starts to get government assistance because she's now on disability. So she doesn't have to really worry about rent and, and things like that because now she doesn't really need to work because she's got work workman's comp, like workman's compensation coming in because she got injured at work. Now, all Catherine needed, all the sexy Catherine needed was a new man. And a new man she found. After several unsuccessful relationships after David Kellett, she meets 38-year-old David Saunders. So David number two. I think we might call him Saunders. Just so you know, D. Saunders. Yes. So she meets this guy and he's like rough, tough. He is a handsome guy and a minor. Like... You know, he would mine things like Minecraft, you know, like Minecraft. Well, he knew about Catherine's fist and her knives and all of that stuff, but her exterior was very sweet and charming. And of course she really liked to get down and jiggy. Like she was always about the sex. I mean, she's mad if she doesn't get it several times. So if a man can keep up with her, good for him. And D. Saunders thought he could be the one. Now, they were together for a few months, and Dave had an apartment in Scones. He actually lived in Scones. Well, Catherine decided to have him move in. 
So he did, and he got along well with her two daughters. But Catherine was a really jealous woman, and she kept thinking, why are you keeping that apartment? You bring a girl there? But it wasn't nice like that. Catherine would get in these fits of rage, and she would be so angry. And Catherine would always accuse him, and he wasn't doing anything, and they were always fighting back and forth. Well, Catherine decided this would be a really good idea to go ahead and take Saunders, eight-week-old puppy, and just like slit its throat in front of him to let him know, if you ever leave me, this is what I will do to you. And then I'll hit you over the head with a skillet so you'll be unconscious. She's done it before, so I'm sure she'll do it again, right? She's not bluffing, man. And even after all of that, David Saunders and Catherine Knight welcome a baby girl, and they name her Sarah. Why, David? Why, D. Saunders? Why? Well, after they had the baby, this really lit a fire under D. Saunders' butt. So he put a deposit on the house. So he's given it a new house for the family. So now he is in a family with Catherine. They have a baby girl. She has two daughters. They have a house. And Catherine, she decorates this house how she loves things to look. With lots of death. Dead animals, dead animal skins, hatchets, knives, pitchforks. Anyone walking in there would be terrified, but not Catherine. This was paradise for Catherine. Well, Catherine, of course, continued to argue and get violent with David Saunders. She got so violent that she hit him in the face with an uh, iron. She started stabbing him in the stomach with some scissors. Now, because she did this, he moved back to scones. But when he had returned, he found that she had taken all of his clothes and cut up all of his clothes. Just cut them all up. Well, David Saunders was like, okay, I'm out. This is, mm -mm, I'm, I am out. So he takes leave from work and literally goes into hiding to hide from Catherine. And she just can't find him. Months later, he returns. David returns because he wants to see his daughter. And he wants to maybe have visitations or something. Well, Catherine said that she was terrified of David because he was abusive and she got a restraining order on him. So I'm not really sure what happened after that, but that was the end of those two in a relationship. Well, Catherine met another guy because you know what? Catherine can't not have a man because she needs the sex, right? And she's good at it. She's real good at it. So she ends up getting together with an old coworker and his name was John Chillingworth, okay? They get together and I would say their relationship was the least crazy, but they still fought. She was still she was still crazy. They did end up they did end up having a child together. It was her first son and they named him Eric. And John actually says there was one time that he hit Catherine. I'm not saying that's okay to hit a woman, but it's not okay for a woman to stab someone either. But Catherine got really mad and she took like a a big glass mug maybe or something. She rammed it into his face, hit him so hard it broke his false teeth and he hit her back. I don't know if I can really blame him there. Just sometimes if somebody hits you, it is just a reflex to hit back and not even trying to hurt them. And sometimes you're just trying to defend yourself and you kind of like this and it's like they hit you, they get hurt and now you hit them. Am I right? I don't get into fights, that's not me. But even though this relationship was about three years, Catherine ended things with him and I guess she just didn't really care. And to be fair to this guy, I don't, I'm not even gonna say to be fair, this guy was the luckiest one. He was the luckiest one. Three years, some fantastic rolls in the hay, a kid, and now she's just like, all right, I'm out. So this was good for him, okay? Well, Catherine meets another guy and guess what this guy's name is? His name is John Price. <laughs> so I don't know if you've noticed this. So there was David Kellett, David Saunders, John Chillingworth, and now John Price. 
we're going to call him pricey. As I was reading interviews about him, people, when they would speak about him, they would always call him pricey. So we're going to call him pricey too. Now pricey had three children of his own. Catherine had three children. He had three children. Now his youngest child was only two and she lived with the mother, but his other son and daughter lived with him. They actually got along really, really well with Catherine. Now Pricey was well aware of Knight's reputation as being very violent, but I guess he didn't seem to care. They had a few serious arguments. Now I do want to say this. This is just, I want to throw this out here. Catherine wasn't dating these kind of weak pushover men. She was dating these manly men. These guys that were getting fights at, at bars. These guys that worked with their hands and they were tough. But they were no match for her. She, she was trying everybody up and hardly anybody was coming at her. Nobody wanted to deal with her because she's insane, right? Or not really insane. She's probably a psychopath. I think there's a difference. So Catherine decides, okay, I would like to marry Pricey. Well, he refused. I guess he didn't really want to get married again. And so Catherine was going to punish him. What she did is she videotaped that Pricey had stole a medical kit from work. Now the medical kit was about to be thrown away. It, the use by date, it was expired. So instead of it going in the trash, she just took it home. Well, she made this video and it ruined his reputation. He got fired from his job that he was at for 17 years because of this. And guess what? He took her back. I'm telling you, she's got the goods. She's got the good, good. I don't even know what that means. But anyway, she, she was laying it on him. She knew how to lay it down. Okay. He took her back after she got him fired from his job of 17 years and destroyed his reputation. Now, when he took her back into the house, he didn't actually let her move back in. He just restarted the relationship, probably because he really wanted the sex, right? But he would not let her move back in, okay? I see was totally fed up with Catherine. She just was so violent and he just couldn't take it anymore. All he, she was assaulting him all the time and hurting him. She was out of control and he was scared of her. Pricey was actually really scared of Catherine. So he went and tried to get a restraining order against her more so because he was afraid for his kids, but afraid for himself and his kids. He talked to the people at work about it and everybody begged him. Don't go home. Don't go home. You can come stay wherever. Do not go home. Well, Price said he really just had to go home because if Catherine was mad and she wants to take it out on somebody, she, he would rather her take it out on him and not his kids, okay? Well, Catherine had a plan. Catherine had a plan. Catherine went, she bought some sexy black lingerie, and yeah, she also made a strange video where she was recording her kids and making comments. Like she knew something was gonna happen. Like that was kind of like a will. It was very strange. So Catherine goes to Pricey's house. She just makes herself at home. She watches a little bit of TV. She goes and takes a shower, gets into her black lingerie. And uh, yeah, she jumps in bed with Pricey and they get down in, in dirty. And yeah, I guess then he goes back to sleep. Well, he wakes up to Catherine with a butcher knife and she's on top of him. Okay. I can tell you what happened yet. I'm not going to tell you what she did. Not yet. Okay. It's the next morning. She's done what she did. And, uh, yeah, it's six o'clock and Pricey hasn't made it to work. Now Pricey never misses work. And he had this conversation that if anything happens to me, it was Catherine. Catherine's going to kill me. And they even were like, don't go home. Catherine's going to kill you. Okay, the neighbors were even concerned because they saw Pricey's car at six past 6 a.m. and they knew he was going to work. The neighbors went over to the house and started to hit on the door, try to see if anybody would come. Nobody would come. And also the people from his work had called the police as well. Police come, they go around the doors and they, they knock on the doors too. Nobody's coming to the door, nothing, okay? 
they go around the house and they see some blood splatter like right outside of the door just like a splatter of blood and they're like okay I guess we need to just go ahead and break in they break in the house and they open the door like in the doorway it's just like this black curtain this very dark curtain and they can actually see like looks like some legs just kind of over in the lounge area behind the curtain like some legs sticking out okay they're just you know, really what, what's going on? There's blood everywhere. There's blood all over the floor, on the walls, handprints, handprints, blood, blood, blood. Yes. There's no Catherine to be seen. And they go to move this curtain. The curtain had hair. The curtain was from the ceiling to the floor. And at the top, you could see John's hair. Then you could see his nose. You could see his mouth. And the way it was just opened up like a, all of his skin. She completely skinned this man. She even took care to go around his genitals. So his pubic hair and his penis and his scrotum were still there. Okay. She completely skinned the man. The legs that they could see sticking out, those were his legs sticking out right there in the lounge area she had him propped up on a chair she decapitated him and you just see him just his legs sticking out so they're having to go around the house they've got it they want to find Catherine they want to see what's going on they go into the dining area and there is like a dining table set out ready for somebody to have some fancy dinner she's got three chairs out looks like one for her one for Jonathan, she put a name, little name tag. Jonathan is one of Price's kids. And then another one that said Beaky, which I believe was his other child. So she set a dinner for his two children and herself. And they had the little name tag. She also wrote some nasty notes, just kind of alleging rape and weird things. And everyone said that that's not even, not even true. The detectives go into the kitchen and they go, there's a pot on the stove and they go to lift up the lid and they can feel it's hot. So the food, I guess it's still cooking. They open it up and literally there's the price's head. Like they, it's looking up at them. They're looking down, totally removed skin head. Okay. So Catherine still left. Price's body sitting over there, but took the head. She also took his butt. She sliced up his butt and she cooked it. She put, it's not funny, you guys, this is so gross. So she cooks that, she seasons it, she adds potatoes and carrots and all that. She also had that in the, in the soup with the head, carrots, potatoes, parsley, you know, all that to make sure that he tasted good, I guess. There was also parts of his butt that were sliced in the backyard. So I don't know if she was trying to throw that out to a pet or what. I don't know. I do not know. They finally find Catherine though. Catherine had taken so many sleeping pills. She was comatose and they had to take her to the hospital actually. And then after her suicide recovery, because I guess she was attempting suicide with the sleeping pills, she says she doesn't remember anything. She said all she remembered was she went home, she had sex with Price, and um, she woke up in the hospital. That's all she remembered. She doesn't remember anything else. Now, rumor has it that she ate Price and it made her so disgusted with herself that she repressed the memory, or she remembers and she's just lying, which I wouldn't put past her. I mean, look at what she did. Yeah, but to this day, I believe that she's still saying that she did not eat any of him. Do you guys believe her? I don't. I don't believe her. I think she ate him. I think she she wanted to see what it tasted like, and I bet she liked it. I bet she liked it. Okay, I'm getting too weird about this. Anyway, she actually stabbed Pricey 37 times. So she stabbed him 37 times. 
Once he was dead, then she removed his skin. So at least I guess she waited till he was dead to remove his skin. But it was done so perfectly the way she, she cut him here, she cut him down, she peeled the skin off. It was very skilled. Something that a butcher would know how to do. Yes. All signs were pointing to Catherine and plus she was there. Okay, no one else was after this man and he had just tried to get a restraining order. So, Catherine, she goes to jail and um, they give her the harshest sentence ever given to a woman in Australia and that's just life without the possibility of parole. Catherine is actually still in prison right now. And you know what? I bet she's trying to get jiggy with the, the, what are they? I bet she's trying to get jiggy with those correction officers. She's like, hey baby, I got the, the good good. <laughs> Y'all, Catherine, oh Catherine, oh Catherine. Anyway, that's basically the end of the story. So, Catherine and her, and her sexy love just, she just, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about her other than I don't know what she's doing in the bedroom to these men that they just keep taking her back and they allow her to be so violent and stab them with objects. I don't know. Do you, what do you guys think? Have you guys heard of Catherine Knight? Well, if you haven't, now you do. <laughs> All right, guys, that's the end of this case. I probably left some stuff out. And like I said, everything that I'm telling you is the truth as I know it, but I may have gotten some information wrong. If I did, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. If you have more information, let me know. This case was so just crazy, but I thought it was good for like, you know, Valentine's Day because it's like a bloody Valentine, you know? You know? Maybe not. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And give me guys any case recommendations or requests. Just put them down in the comments down below. And I think that's it. I think that is all. I don't want to say goodbye, but I have to. Okay. <laughs> Bye.